Okay, we are now going to move from rectangular coordinates to coordinates that we call normal and tangential coordinates, okay, or my n and my t axis. So, if particle is following a path, as shown here on the blue line, okay, at any point on that path, the t axis can be defined as tangent, that's where the t comes from, tangent to the path in the direction that it's moving, in the direction of the velocity. The n axis is perpendicular to that t-axis and pointed towards the center of curvature. Okay, so in this plot here, curving like this, n points towards the center of that curvature, towards the center of what would be a circle. Okay, t is tangent, n is normal to the tangent. Okay, so once we define that, we can go ahead and define our velocity and our acceleration as we've done before. So, by definition, the velocity is simply the speed v in the direction of the tangent tangent to the path, which we're going to uh, call u sub t, u being the unit vector in the t direction. Okay, And that's basically just the definition here. Now, in order to do the acceleration, we have to take a time derivative of that velocity, which means I have to take a time derivative of v u t. Now, when I take that time derivative, I get dv dt times the unit vector plus v times the time derivative of the unit vector. Now, here's the thing. That unit vector changes with time, as opposed to with rectangular coordinates. As I move around that path, right, ut changes in direction. Therefore, I can't just throw that away, call it zero, because it does change as a function of time. So at this point, if you just want to skip ahead, get the, the, the final answer, that's great. But we're going to go through the derivation to get the acceleration in the normal and tangential directions. Okay. To do that, we need to follow this. And first, we should define the radius of curvature, which would be, you know, for these two points, where would the center of the circle be? What was the radius away? If you look in any calculus book, it'll have this. Let's just throw it up there so you have it. If you have the equation for the path, you can find the radius of curvature at any point. Okay. So again, I move from here to here, some position ds through an angle of what I'm going to call d theta at a radius of curvature of rho, which I can find from this. Therefore, that arc length, or ds, is simply that radius of curvature rho times d theta. Now, of course, I can divide this by dt, right, uh, which would be ds dt, d theta dt, okay, and I hope it's obvious that ds dt equals the velocity, right? By definition, ds dt equals the velocity, okay? And that's going to equal rho times d theta dt, okay? So rearranging a little bit, I can get d theta dt equal to the velocity divided by the radius of curvature, okay? So again, the um, change in angle as a function of time is defined as the velocity divided by the radius of curvature. Now, I can also look at something this because again, what I'm basically trying to find is find the time derivative of um, my uh, unit vector in the tangential direction. So the change in the unit vector is given by this little vector right here, right? Ut is pointed in this direction. U prime t is pointed in this direction. So I have this little um, infinitesimal change in the unit vector, okay? And that is equivalent to the magnitude 1, if I think about this as an arc length, just like I thought about ds, right? This radius is 1 because this is a unit vector, okay, times the angle d theta, right? So dut is just 1 times d theta, therefore, okay, I can write this in vector form, okay, which is what I want to find. I want to find the time derivative of that vector, okay? So I know the magnitude is just d theta, and also that that vector is pointing in the same direction as the unit vector, right? This is in that direction. So I can write the dut in vector form as just d theta times u in the n direction, u sub n in the normal direction. Taking a time derivative of this, I can get, again, what I'm looking for, du dt, right? Du dt equals d theta dt un. Again, just basically dividing this equation by dt. Now over here, again, I found d theta dt is just velocity over rho, so I can plug in 
that into here. So I can find that the time derivative of the tangential unit vector is just v over rho times the unit vector in the normal direction. I'm going to take this, plug it into this top equation for acceleration, and I find that the acceleration has two components, one in the tangential direction, which is effectively the change in speed, dv dt, Okay, so how much it's increasing or decreasing its speed, plus I'm going to take this v times v over rho un, so I get b squared over rho in the normal direction. So again, this is my normal acceleration, or what we call my centripetal acceleration. Okay, so acceleration going around a curve has two components, change in speed in the tangential direction and a centripetal acceleration of the velocity squared over the radius of curvature in the normal direction. 